What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And tonight, we have a real, real, real special guest in the building. This man here has produced some of the biggest events in the city. Some events like Redemption, Sunset, Carnival Rehab, Toronto Rum Festival, Army Fed, All We Are One, Day One, Aftershock, Toronto Reggae Fest. Listen, the list goes on. He has so much accomplishments, we're going to speak about them tonight. You know who we have in the building? We have the bandit in the building tonight. What's going on, my brother? Well, you know, I hear usual. Take yeah. it easy. Definitely, intro definitely. like that, it yeah. kind of make me think about the things that I've done myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes hearing it back from somebody else outside of your head or your circle, it sounds different. It does. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's why they call you Mr. Do-It-All, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done quite a few things. Yeah, quite a few things. Let's let's get into your early days of things here, all right? Yeah. First of all, how did you even come up with your name? Because your name is a real interesting name. It's not DJ Bandit or The Bandit. It's D apostrophe Bandit. You know what I mean? Um, well, I mean, uh, the name kind of came from, I was trying to obviously come up with some kind of tagline, something that sort of symbolizes back then okay. what I wanted to do. And, yeah. and um, it, it originally was uh, the Iron Bandit, actually. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. the Iron Bandit was sort of a play on two things. It was, yeah. uh, you know, iron with uh, what we beat in soca and yeah. stuff, iron. And uh, it was supposed to sort of symbolize iron as a turntable. Yeah. So the Iron Bandit was... It was a kind of yeah. play between two things where the iron and soca and yeah. and iron is a turntable. And then I eventually thought, at, at eventually, yeah. I would lose the iron and okay. just be the bandit. And how long did you actually have the full name for? <laughs> a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I always knew it was going to eventually end up as the bandit anyways. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, you know, back then... You know, there was a popular song, That's the Bandit, boy, 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 look the bandit. Right? Yes. So it was one of those things where that was there, um, I knew about mm. that song, and, you know, I just figured it kind of worked well together. Yeah. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. So yeah. then it's just D, bandit. D, and yeah. D, you know, apostrophe for D for Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much in one. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? But it just really goes to your mindset, especially because how long have you had that name now? Um, wow, that mm. name I've had it for, giving away my age here, but, um, <laughs> 20, 24 years maybe? 24? Yeah. Hey, wow, that's big. So again, that means your way of thinking was from way back then. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way how you've done so many things in the city and all that. And we're talking, since we're talking about the bandit, I know where I've really known you from mm -hmm. was original days of KOS. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Would you say that was where you really broke out? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, break out, you know, it's kind of hard to say because before KOS, you mm -hmm. know, I was actually on the scene as well, excuse me, with um, the Outlaws. And funny enough, the, it kind of worked well where yeah. the Bandit and the Outlaws, yeah. you know, because okay. I used to play under Ernest and them in the yeah. Outlaws at one point. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that was your original crew, we'll call it? I mean, yeah, you could kind of call it the original crew. I mean... It's kind of it's kind of weird because I mean coming from Grenada, my my whole intention to come to Toronto was yeah. or come back to Toronto, I yeah. should say, was uh, just to basically to go to post secondary school. So I didn't really come here to stay. Yeah. Right. So okay. originally, I you know my thought process on actually DJing here in mm. Toronto was small. Okay, so then that wasn't even what that wasn't even part of your mindset at no, all. No, no. My yeah. mindset was just to come here, you know, do post-secondary school and head back to Grenada. Yeah. You know, and do business down there. Okay. Um, uh, but, like, so I did engineering in school. Um, I didn't even do business, but yeah. I did engineering in school. <laughs> Makes sense. Basically so. as a, a fallback plan. Yeah. Right? So, uh, business, you know, I've been doing business from I was, like, 12. Uh, so, I thought to myself, you know, business is always going to be in the blood, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, the, since you're talking about business, cause we're going to get to KOS because that's a big part of oh, the yeah, legacy there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you say you've been doing business from your 12. What mm -hmm. type of business were you doing or you were introduced to at that time there? Um, well, we did liquor. Okay. Yeah. We did yeah. Uh, wholesale liquor. 
Uh, we did retail liquor. We yeah. did duty free liquor. Okay. Yeah. And we yeah. Uh, eventually did a uh, nightclubs, which is retail, retail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So okay. um, you know we were heavily involved in liquor down there. So mm. you know from I was twelve, I was lifting cases of of Johnny Walker Black yeah. and and, and um, Reunity wine and mm. them kind of things from since back then. And the funny thing with it, I heard that you're not even really a drinker. No. Yeah. No, I don't drink. I yeah. mean, I had a bad experience when I was younger. Okay. So um, from since then, I realized, you know, I don't really need alcohol. Yeah. You know? Why um, Why get high on your own supply? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the supplier. I take care. You guys get high, I supply. You know what I mean? Big. And what was the name of the club and stuff that you guys had back home in Grenada? Uh, the Sugar Mill. The Sugar Mill. Yeah. Uh, Le Sucre in the Sugar Mill, basically, yeah. is what it was called. As a matter of fact, I was actually called, um, down in Grenada, yeah. the Sugar Child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a few names. I had yeah. Becca Pitt. I had Sugar Child. I had a few names yeah. down in Grenada. So people okay. in Grenada, if they, if I hear somebody say, hey, Becca Pitt. Yeah, okay, you know, that's I original. Know, that's <laughs> original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how long were you guys running the club for down there? Um, Let me see, boy. From like... I want to say 89 okay. to about, sorry, 88, 89 to about maybe 98-ish. Okay. Yeah. So, so like almost like a 10 years run. Yeah, yeah it was a 10 years run. And I mean, after that, we uh, we leased it out because part of the reason why it never really continued is because I wasn't back there as often as I could. So, you. you know, part of the business kind of went down. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad was yeah. was really at that verge of he was tired of it and ready to let go. And yeah. I wasn't ready to go back. So things kind of went on a decline. So we ended up leasing it out to people down there and mm -hmm. people kind of took it over and... One to the drama, don't oh, so. From one thing to the next, you, under, you know how back home business goes already. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. Wow. So were you actually DJing from the club open or you just started, you got interested after the club opened? Um, started to DJ um, after the club opened. Okay. Right? Because um, as a matter of fact, the reason why I started to DJ was we didn't have a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look around. Um, yeah. You're the DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was always interested in music. Yeah. Um, you know, from it was kind of handed down from my my parents and my extended family and stuff. But, okay. Um, yeah, always involved in music. Used to have my own little birthday parties in yeah. the living room and yeah. thing, and you know, go to me and some fellas used to go mm. and do tape deck mixing and uh -huh. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. Um, so we always did that. But yeah, I ended up going to DJ. Yeah. Um, luckily to be there in my father's club, and mm -hmm. you know that kind of went into. You know, doing something called a dance party in Grenada. Okay, what what is that there? So dance party was yeah. for my contemporaries, our yeah. age group. We used okay. to do a teenage party. You know, day. So yeah. the way it worked was um, on a Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. the same club that your parents went to, right? All the teenagers and everybody would yeah. come and party yeah. during the summer or during the Christmas. Yeah. Right, and then we would be the ones DJing. So we would have, you know, dance party and, you know, have um, dance competitions and singing competitions and all yeah. them things from way back then. Okay, that's big right there. So it's like you we get to use a club for two different things. Yeah. The, the kids first and then the adults later. Correct. You know what I mean? That's that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. so we were doing day parties back then. It was like a, a three to seven. Yeah. And then uh, we would flip it and then... Go into the night. Clean up and then the adults come in. Correct. You know what I mean? Okay. And then how long were you DJing in the club for about? I was DJing, as I said, from around, uh, I started to DJ around maybe 89 ish. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a guy by the name of Star Child out of Trinidad. Yeah. Um, he had a song called Who Come With It Rolling Anyways. Yeah. When we used to bring a lot of these DJs from Trinidad to okay. Grenada, yeah. um, I would take a little bit from them and learn a little bit from them and kind of see how they would do mm -hmm. guys like Howie T and mm -hmm. and Tweez and, yeah. and Tweez is out of 96 in um, in uh, Trinidad right okay. now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all these guys, when they would come to Grenada, we would mm -hmm. bring them over, my dad would bring them over mm -hmm. and I would be there as a 17, 18 year old and just pick up a little piece from them, yeah. you know, different things and, you know, learn all kinds of stuff. It um, makes sense because something like that, especially what I see with the Trinidad DJs, mm -hmm. they always mix super clean. Yeah, man. They were very 
technical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 From yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah, of course. The Chinese laundries, the FPMs, yeah. the Howie Tees. The Howie Tees. All yeah. those guys, you know, um, they were very clean. And that's, yeah. those are the guys I grew up on and listened to and, yeah. and learned to play from and understood their style. And, you know, it was more about, you know, I wasn't... I didn't understand the Jamaican influence, for example, yeah. okay. where there was, you know, an MC and a DJ. You know, I knew about just straight mixing. Yeah. And that's the, the school I come from. Right? Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny enough, when I came up here, there was very few people that were DJing like that. Yeah. You know, one of them was uh, starting from scratch. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, so I would be in Toronto, yeah. not DJing, more just going to parties and liming. Yeah. Right? Taking again, in the vibes. Exactly. I'm there mm -hmm. just going to school, you know, and, and just sort of, absorbing all these guys that were here mm -hmm. and taking a bit of them and taking that back to Grenada and DJing down there, right? Yeah. So I would be going back home for the full summer or Christmas, okay. right? Um, after doing school and then just doing things. I'd go to the record stores, buy records and, you know, that kind of stuff. So Oh, from there. All right. So then when you decided to say, okay, you're going to go full throttle in the Toronto scene, mm -hmm. did you actually have to bring up your records or you started back fresh in Toronto? What did you actually do when you started to go full throttle? See, that's, that's kind of hard because, mm -hmm. you know, I would say probably not until maybe 90, 97, 98-ish yeah. is when I decided to sort of be here more. Okay. Um, because, again, I was going to school and my main thing was to go back when every, yeah. you know, every summer, every Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say probably 99 was when I really started to, that's when I missed Mm -hmm. Grenada and stayed started to stay full time. That's got when you. I graduated actually. Got you. Um, so I would say full time. I I kind of had two records of almost everything. Yeah. Right. So I would yeah. have stuff down there, and then I would have stuff in yeah. Toronto, um, and then I would bring stuff with me back. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of hard to say when there was a full time. Got you here because it yeah. was mostly between the two places. Right? Got you. That makes sense. So then how did you even get connected with KOS? How did that all come together? Well, again, you know, as I said, I being a party person myself, okay. you know, I was one of those guys that, you know, would be in the middle of the dance floor, right. taking off your shirt <laughs> and whining on girls. And I <laughs> it's hard to believe that. Eh? I was. I, I can't. Was that no, dude. I can't I picture that, that at all. Yeah, man. So mm -hmm. I was that dude who would be, you know, my me and a couple of friends that I knew from Grenada and yeah. guys who I met on the scene here, you know, because I used to go to like California Dreams and yes, Juke yes. Pits and all mm -hmm. them things from way back. Yeah, you know. So um, yeah, we used to go to parties, and as I said, from since way back then, mm -hmm. I would always try to absorb something from someone. You know, I I, yeah. I have this belief where, you know. You never stop educating yourself. Ever. Right? Mm -hmm. And from back then, just absorbing. And, and um, you know, yeah, I would say back then, mm -hmm. I would be in the parties. I would play in different parties as well because okay. back then I was, I knew guys like Mal Malcolm. Yep. Right? Up, and, yep. and Mesfin. Yep. And, and those guys, they had a group called Bay Jam way back. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. They had exclusive. Yes. Right. Um, and then I have to mention Ian and Hazel because Ian and Hazel were the first ones to really give me uh, 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 an inside here in Toronto. That okay. was way back when, boy, that was like, ooh, 94, 95 ish. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Ian and Hazel, they were big on the scene back then, right? They and they were promoters or club owners? They were promoters. Okay. So, Ian and Hazel were the, I don't know if you remember, firefighters. Yeah, man. Firefighters, sure. which was mm -hmm. Shangri-La, basically. Mm -hmm. So they used to do a long weekend event every yes, Sunday. Yes, right? yes, and, yes. Right? Um, and so it ended up that that was mostly outlaws that used to play for that. Mm -hmm. So I went to Ernest, um, who used to work at Play The Record, and mm -hmm. I said, yo, Ernest, I just need a place to play to keep yeah. up my skills because I'll be going back to yeah. um, Grenada for summer. So, you know, just let me come and play and do a couple Sharpen. of things, right? Just to stay sharp, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up playing for the whole Ian and Hazel, and I knew Ian and Hazel. Okay. And, um, yeah, they used to let me come in and do a thing. And because I was doing that, you know, my cousin knew Mike Malcolm yeah. and Mesfin and those guys. And he would be like, yo, my cousin DJs, you yeah. know, you should let him come. He does reggae and soca and thing, right? And, um, you know, Bay Jam, they would let me come in and 
do a couple of things. And then from Bay Jam, it mm-hmm. went to Exclusive. Yeah. And uh, I was one of the main DJs at Exclusive. Okay. And there was a time actually when it was just myself and starting from scratch, I used to play for Exclusive. As okay. A, as a matter of fact, Scratch used to say, yo, there's only a few people I want to play with. Yeah. And I was one of them. Right, and that was a That's long weekend. Big, yeah. yeah, that was a long weekend um, Sundays. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So, I was doing those things mm-hmm. um, on the long weekends, uh, a couple of things here and there with the Bay Jam, and just being in parties. Yeah. You know, going to. I mean, I always loved soca. Yeah. So I would go to you know a J party or an Island Boys party yeah, where yeah. J would be playing mm-hmm. and you know representing and uh, two hands yeah. in the air and <laughs> getting on wasi, you know. Sure enough. Uh, whining on girl, <laughs> going to all them. <laughs> I can't picture that one there. Going to all them university parties. Yeah. Even back okay. then, if you remember, they used yeah. to have all those York university parties, yes. mm-hmm. right? And York, you know, King Tubo used to be there playing, and you know, I think it was TKO used to. Play Play yep. too, and all and these guys, Lindo P, yeah, but all, all of those them guys used to play. Yeah. So I used to be going to all those parties yeah. and just taking it in, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I used to know guys around, and the KOS thing kind of came because, if if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. um, Jay. Oh, before KOS, um, again I was close with Jay to yeah. a certain extent, um, and I saw what he was doing, and I was all for it, and I thought I needed to do something because I always had this itch to kind of do yeah. parties. So mm-hmm. one of the first parties that I ever did in Toronto yeah. was something called the Prince and Bandit Fet. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had no <laughs> idea. Yeah. So yeah. if you see, actually, once or twice, I think I've posted it on, um, on Instagram, yeah. where there's a cartoon character of myself and Jay, yeah. right? Where I have a, uh, a record on my finger and he has a crown on his head. Yeah. I mean, he just some little freckles and thing looking like Jay. Okay, yeah, that I was, didn't know. Yeah, that was yeah. Prince and Bandit, but that was yeah. back in like 95. And this is pre-KOS. Pre-KOS. Yeah. Right? So we did that. I did that FET. Yeah. Only had maybe about 150 people, 200 okay. people, but that yeah. was for like a birthday party, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there was also a time we did, I did a, a barbecue mm-hmm. um, uh, and it was on Hill Farm because I used to live um, in Hill Farm, which is Alton Towers at one point. Okay, so um, hold on. You're originally from Scarborough too, bro? No, you want to hear a joke? You want to hear a joke? What's up? What's up? Let me give you a yeah. real joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I used to live here yeah. years ago, mm-hmm. right, before, because I left here when I was six. Yeah. Yeah, my, my parents used to live in Malvern. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? No idea. Yeah, we've was, all learned some new stuff yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 thirty. I think it was thirty-three Blackwell. Yeah, was the street. Someone even says Blackwell. Big up the Blackwell crew, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, way back, way back, that was yeah. in the seventies, right? Mm-hmm. Giving away my age again. It's anyways. all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all so, good. So um, yeah, so um, yeah, had a b- uh, barbecue for a birthday with me and my um, my cousin and I. Yeah, um, that was. Probably in the mid nineties again too. But anyways, yeah. long story short, um, I knew those guys from around KOS. Yeah. And uh, Jay approached me and uh, he says, you know, we're trying to put together this group, um, you know, Kingdom of Soka. You mm-hmm. know, we'd like to bring you in. You know, um, and back then there was different types of groups. Okay. Right. Um, so again, you know, the King Turbos, yep. the the um, Black Sheep. Um, yep. uh Downtown Outlaws, you know, they had these groups. Yeah. And the way it was kind of pitched to me was, hey, we see you guys, everyone does their own thing, mm-hmm. right? And our intention is with the strength of everyone doing their own thing, right? We want to make this big super group. Super group, yeah. That, right? That's, and, that's what and, I call it. And yep. almost like, and I, this is the, the analogy that sticks out all the time, yeah. almost like Voltron. Uh huh. Right. So it was one of those things where okay, Jay has his strength. You know, Bandit can have his strength. Jester can have his strength. You know, uh, E Man can have his strength. Mm-hmm. And together, Voltron makes this big superpower. Superpower, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, Jay was always the bigger entity. Got you, right? Especially in the soca scene. I mean, yeah. Jay, yo, know, Jay to me is like uh, a visionary. You know, one of those guys that. You know, it's unfortunate sometimes when you think back and some mm. of the things that could have happened. From right? back then. From yeah. back then, because mm. the movement mm-hmm. that it that used to happen back then, like the momentum that it was going with, mm-hmm. it was 
unparalleled. Like it was unmatched. Like even in the, I did. I don't. I think the only thing that could really compare to where we were headed mm-hmm. was like a Stone Love. Okay. In That's to, to the where you guys were really trying to create. Where we were headed, mm-hmm. right? And and again, where we were trying to create, where mm-hmm. we were headed. I feel like back then, soca wise, it would have been on parallel if we kept going. You Got know? you. Um, but obviously, different types of worlds, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, they came and they asked me, you know, would you be interested to do this and be a part of this group? And you know, for me back then, I was like, yo. You like that? This is proper. Right? Yeah. This this can go on. You know, yeah. I I'm all for it because, you know, I come from. My family and extended family, mm-hmm. is really that we yeah. are. Uh, I really believe in family because, yeah. um, I'll give you an example. Uh, well, even though I was living in Grenada, mm-hmm. I would come up, let's say, once every other year. Right. Okay. And stay by family. And Auntie, this our uh, uncle that. Correct. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we would have picnics. We would go mm-hmm. to like a Blue Jays game together. We'd go to Canada's Wonderland. Yeah. You know, you know, I could go and sleep by this mm-hmm. one and stay by that one and, mm-hmm. you know, hang out here. And, and while we sleeping and having night um, uh, pajama parties yeah. upstairs, the parents <laughs> downstairs, downstairs in the basement uh-huh. all hours of the night. And, you yeah. know, so that's where I come from. Mm-hmm. And it's really about extended families yeah. you know i would call you my cousin for sure even though we're not really blood related right people always used to tell us they used to be like yo your family is huge <laughs> everybody's uncle this or auntie that or cousin somebody or another Correct. people always wondered how is your family so big yeah right like we would roll with literally 40 50 people <laughs> Deep. wow yeah you know um you know and um there's all kinds of stories, back-end mm-hmm. stories behind that. But anyways, mm-hmm. the story is, with that, I saw that vision. I saw that family unit, Yeah, you know, and I felt like that was the way to go. For sure. You know, mm-hmm. um, I hope that answers your question. No, no, for sure. No, 100%. <laughs> and how long were you actually a part of the movements for? Um, I was probably there until maybe 2002, 2003. So you say you did about uh, six years? So from 97. 97 to, okay, about to five. 2003. 2000, 2002, 2003. I'm not sure exactly. Five, six, in that realm there. Yeah, somewhere around there. All right. And what were some of your brightest moments in KOS? <sighs> brightest moments in KOS? Yeah. Um, One moment in particular that stands out that you'll never forget. Hmm. There's so many, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, it's, I, I can't really pinpoint... Anything, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Um, you know, if someone came, my, my my daughter came to me the other day, and she was like, what's your favorite song? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my answer to that was, I don't have a favorite song. Okay. Because I feel like there is a song for every occasion. Got you. Right? And I can't really pinpoint and say there's a favorite moment, mm-hmm. because I feel like there are so many moments that, you know, may have had some kind of turning point or some kind of feeling or some mm-hmm. kind of euphoria at that particular time. Okay. Right? Um, and, man, there was, like, different whiteouts. There was yes. return fetid government, uh, or, sorry, cool house. Mm-hmm. There was an El Dorado um, battle between myself and Jay. Okay. Where, like, you know, Jay is playing one record. We are going record for record. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, you, you know, he would drop this and I would drop that and the crowd would be like, <laughs> and, be like and almost like, because at the yeah. end of the day, I was that new guy. So, it was, yeah. you know, Jay's thing and yeah. this guy's coming in and, yo, yeah. oh, you see Who what is this guy? Guy? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, there's so many moments. I mean, um, you know, I remember Dust Them. Yeah. Dust Them with, with Kurt Allen. Yeah. Return, in fact, I remember a Juve mm-hmm. at Palais Royale. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Juve at yeah. Palais Royale. The <laughs> wedding place. <laughs> what? A Juve, you know. Not a fact. Juve <laughs> at Palais Royale. Who does that? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? What was what was the thinking behind that? How did we get that? Mm. How is that even possible? You know? And 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 good on Jay and those guys. Because yeah. back then I didn't really have much um 
involvement with getting the venues, venues and that and kind stuff. of stuff okay. when it comes to KOS. Yeah. Um, but I was still doing different things, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I was still doing all of we, um From back then? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. All of we started in yeah. 90s. Yeah. Didn't know that, right? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Because, yeah. again, that was the principle. The principle yeah. was it wasn't just about KOS. It yeah. was about continuing as D-Bandit, mm -hmm. continuing as Jester, continuing mm -hmm. as Dr. J, mm -hmm. right? And then Voltron. Voltron. Got you. So that was the thing. So I would do my bandanas, for example. Yeah. Right? Jay would do his, you know, towels, rags his and rags, stuff, yep. and Jester would do his stuff. He would yeah. do stickers and, you know, diff different types of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that was the uh, the whole idea. So to say that there was uh, an actual moment, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think I, I even remember there was a time when I think we we were at um, – uh, Atlantis at the yeah. time. Yes. Like there was times Atlantis when, times. yo, there was a time we did Fever at the island, bro. I don't know if you remember that. Yo, there was a time when... Caravana weekend? Or this no, was outside this of Caravana? outside of Caravana. Wow. So this was, this was KOS, yeah. right? And starting from scratch, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I think Skimpy Boy was there too. I'm not, mm -hmm. I can't really remember, yeah. but it was, it was something at Island Club, yeah. which is across the island. And I remember them times Square One Ragamuffin was big. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. And Square One, tigga, 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 Ragamuffin. <laughs> and yo, the whole place was yeah. just, wow. Yeah. 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 Them times, like that's what I'm saying. Like those moments mm -hmm. are moments when you were real, when I was realizing, yo, mm -hmm. Soka's heavy. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there were times where, you know, we were KOS and we were inside of Power Bar. You know what I mean? Yes. And we had to, we had our own floor. You know what I mean? Because okay. people needed soca. Yeah. You know, they needed the reggae. Mm -hmm. You know? And it wasn't one of those things where, you know, we were a reggae sound. Yeah. We were a soca sound that could play reggae, reggae. and soca yeah. and R&B, mm -hmm. hip hop and just mm -hmm. smash it. Yeah. You know? So, uh, a favorite moment... Really hard to say. Crazy. No, those stories are crazy. Just even some of the stuff that you're saying, yeah. that's crazy. Because some of them I knew because I was even there. But a lot of them I did not know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay, then. That was great. So when did the cracks start to happen in the foundation then? The cracks started to happen, I think, I, I want to say when... I, it's maybe different visions. Okay. Right? Um as you can probably tell, I've always had an itch yeah. with different things. Yeah. So, you know, I've always been that guy like, yo, we need to do this now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, we need to do this. We need to get going. Yeah. Why is this guy the only guy doing this? We can do this. Yeah. So I was always that guy in the crew mm -hmm. that would say something like, why can't we bring a carnival band? Yeah. Let's do something for Carabana. Let's have a t-shirt truck. Yeah. Right? Let's bring Marshall. Yo, guys, I know David Rutter, yeah. right, from my club in Grenada. I have the contact. Mm -hmm. We could bring David Rutter. Right? And it would always be, yo, mm -hmm. just cool, guy. Yeah. Can't do that yet. That's Ian Wilshire. We can't be doing that God kind of stuff. You. So a lot of the time, it was, I, I would have this itch. Mm -hmm. um, so... It kind of wouldn't really happen, you know. Um, even though there was still the KOS things, and Jay was always diplomatic, mm -hmm. and and as I said, I always learned from all kinds of things, and I picked up a lot from Jay. I picked up a lot from KOS. Yeah. There were times in in meetings where we believed, mm -hmm. you know, and this is coming from the head down, meaning from Jay mm -hmm. and Wayne. Yes. Um, uh, and coming from the head down that, you know, hey, we're, we're leaders. Mm -hmm. We're not followers. So we're going to do our thing mm -hmm. and not care about anybody else. Got you. Right? Mm -hmm. And I believed in that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I took from that. And, and I took from different things in the meeting and, and sort of made it into my own and evolved and... and um, you know, a lot of the time, as I said, there was just so many things that, you know, ideas would come from. And, you know, 
we would want to do something, but then certain things wouldn't follow through. Got you. Right? And that would be a little bit frustrating for me. Mm-hmm. So I always felt like, okay, all right. The original plan was we continue to do our thing on our own. Got you. Right? So I'm going to do my thing on my own. And I continue to do that. Right? Yeah. It only really started, I would say, when I started to stay in Toronto yeah. more. So I started to live in Toronto, I think, from around 98, 99. Got joined KOS in like 97-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, and from back then, 99, if I'm not mistaken, that's when I decided, all right, time to do all of we. And the whole all of we principle was, mm-hmm. all right, let's say there's five DJs. Mm-hmm. Each DJ is going to play one record. Got you. Right? So, so it's it basically like, one for one. All night. All night. Yeah. Right? And it, that was the concept of the all we. It was mm-hmm. like we were doing that and doing it. And it was a competitive nature, right? And people would feed off of that. Mm-hmm. And there was an energy, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to do. I started to do. Um, you know, I was still doing, going back to Grenada and doing things. Mm-hmm. Um, I would still continue to play for, you know, exclusive. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you know, I would be the one playing for exclusive, and then I brought in Jester, for example. Got you. Right. Yeah. Um, and Jay really wasn't playing because for those guys, he mm-hmm. was more on the soca tip. So he was more doing like the Ian Wilshers and yeah. those things. But myself and Jester were almost like the we were the the club KOS representatives. Yeah. You could float in and out. You could be in the club Friday night mm-hmm. and in the Fed Saturday night right. and still you wouldn't miss a beat. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, Jay was still in those, he was still in that light as well. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that, you know, I really appreciated with, with Jay was mm-hmm. he would defend us. Yeah. You know? Okay. When I say defend us, he would be like, yo, these guys need to be here. Yeah. Right. Our our price back then wasn't Jay's price, mm-hmm. right? But you know the fact that obviously that I was playing for things like exclusive and those guys gave it some credibility, yeah. right? But he defended us, which was my guys really, have to be here, right? Mm-hmm. He defended us, starting from scratch, defended us. Yeah, um, you know, and you know, I think you know, there, I think there was a time when even Baby Blue was like, "Yo, these KOS guys," yeah. you know what I mean? Because we were Crazy. doing something yeah. that a lot of other guys were not doing. Mm-hmm. Even though I know Scratch to be that one dude that was yeah. playing soca and reggae. Everything all in one. Right? Yeah. And you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it was this guy playing soca, reggae, Did house, hip hop. Yeah. Everything. Mm-hmm. And to me he was playing like a Trinidad yeah. or a Grenadian DJ. Yeah. That style of mix up everything and keep it going. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um so the, to, to go back to the, your question on when the crack actually started, mm-hmm. um, I want to say there was probably some tension between myself and Jay. Okay. Um, and I think, it, you know, it could be for whatever reason. Fair enough. Who really knows? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I was headstrong. Jay was also headstrong. Mm-hmm. Um, even though back then, if I remember correctly, there was a time I was saying, because I could see where it was going, mm-hmm. but I wasn't going to be held back. I wasn't going to hold, I wasn't going to like stop. Like, yeah. I come from a background where, yo. Yeah. Keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's business, bro. At all times. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, it, it, and, and no disrespect to anyone, mm-hmm. um, but back then, I was like, okay, we can't see eye to eye. Yeah. But this is still too big. So let's just find a way to keep it cordial yeah. and do business. Um, and I don't think they could have, they couldn't deal with that back then. Fair enough. Right? Um, which was fine with me. Yeah. Because, as I said, I always have an itch. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, back then I had already, redemption was going. You see, you beat me. Okay, I love that segue. I love that segue. I love that segue. Redemption was going back then. Um, Unite the Nations has already started. Okay. Um, All of We was going. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Memoirs of Soka yes, was going. I forgot about that. Yes. Um, and I had my own little like crews and mm -hmm. associations. Yeah. You know, back then I was associated with uh, Curtis Eustace and Marcus Eustace and mm -hmm. Bryce Agito, yes. which was Island Boys. So I was still, I was already in a in a forward motion. Yeah. So to me, it was like, yo, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. This Voltron thing is going to make sense because I'm growing as an entity as well, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, Jay, you're doing J Jam, you're doing Return Fed, you're doing all these things, and I'm doing all these things as well. Mm -hmm. For the bigger thing... For the Voltron. It would mm -hmm. make sense. Yeah. But um, unfortunately, back then, mm -hmm. I guess there were too many... Uh, too many things that didn't see eye to eye. I mean, I, I want to say it was more on Jay okay. at some point. Um, because, as I said, I said, yo, let's just do business. Mm -hmm. um, but it is what it is. It is good. And the fact that you guys went through it and could still play and be partners today in different things, that's still amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and, and again, going back to the whole family thing, mm -hmm. you know, it was... You know, now that I, when I look back on it, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, a, a brother and sister, brother and brother fight or a, a cousin or something. You know, he's your family, right? You're going to fight. You don't have to see eye to eye, but that doesn't mean we have to want to do bad stuff to each other and all no. those things. Are, you know what no, I mean? No, no, no. Just I mean, you do your thing, I do mine. Right. I mean, I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like, it was a big deal in Toronto at the time. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, man. Oh, God. I used yeah. to think it was real funny. Yeah. Me personally. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and in hindsight, mm -hmm. you know, there's a few things that happened and took place that, um, you know, I may have, I may, I definitely regret. Okay. Fair right? enough. Um, you know, you know, sometimes when you joke the ants nest. Yeah, so, and then so, the ants bite you. So I was, I was that dude. All right, I, I would joke Joking. the ants nest. You know what I'm so I, every now and again, I would joke the ants yeah. nest, but didn't really mean anything behind it. Yeah. You know, it was just. But um, I re I quickly realized mm -hmm. that don't joke the ants nest. Yeah, and stay focused. One hundred percent. Right. Um, so once I started to stay focused. Yeah. More things started to happen. Yeah. You brought up something mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about. Redemption. Yes. You know and I mean, how did that start? Because you brought up Scratch's name a couple of times in this mm -hmm. podcast already. How did that start? And who was the original people when it came to Redemption? Um, the original people was um, myself, Scratch, and mm -hmm. Presto. Okay. Um, so, as I said, the whole Memoirs of Soka thing, uh, there was a movement, I would say, from ever since, from, I mean... In Toronto, people love music. Yeah. Right? They're very, um, they know a lot about music. Mm -hmm. And because of that now, there was a, there's always been a movement about, you know, old school. And I put quotations around that because someone's old school is different to another person. There's 90s, 2000s, 80s, 70s, 60s, you know right, what I mean? Right. And then, again, that's something that I've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. Right? So you might say, oi. I need to hear some old school, and yeah. your old school might be five years down the road, yeah. right? Or my old school might be thirty years down the road. Yeah. Um, but anyways, in, in the nine, in the late nineties, I would say there was a movement for old school. Okay. Um, you know, because that's when Amnesia, for example, started off. Yes. Um, so Amnesia started off in the, in ninety nine, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, yo, I need to do the soca version and yeah. I need to do a reggae version because okay. I thought to myself, yo, there's a reggae mm -hmm. uh, audience here yeah. that's going to just love this, eat this up, yeah. right? So, you know, I went to Scratch because back then, mm -hmm. you know, Scratch was heavy, right? Um, you know, I also had my little soca kind of following and my little group. So you so were I, doing your thing. Right. And I thought, I went to Scratch and I was like, yo, bro, I want to do this reggae back in times thing yeah. right uh what do you feel mm -hmm. and he's like yeah you know what i was going to be doing something yeah. with yeah. with um i think with presto i think he was saying okay right yeah um so i'm like okay well why don't we just do it together yeah right um and um 
you know, I think we all came to an agreement and, uh, you know, Presto was there. I didn't really know Presto that much back okay, then. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of, uh, we all did the first one, I think was at Granite Lounge. I heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when we did it at Granite Lounge, I can't really remember how it went, but it was probably like 150 people. Yeah. If so much. <laughs> that seems to be your target. Yeah. <laughs> 152. It was like a niche yeah. market, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we were there and, um, yeah. Uh, you see a lot of these things are so like blurry because yeah. back then there's so much going on. You know, because I'm DJing yeah. and handling the door and yeah. doing this and doing that. Crazy, and, yeah. You know, um, so you know how the name came about. Mm-hmm. I think we went through some Bob Marley names back then. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Redemption kind of came out of it. I can't remember how it came out of the hat, but yeah. Redemption we kind of solidified on Redemption because Redemption song is a big song. Yeah, of course, right? you know, one one of his biggest songs. Correct. So yeah. is that a Redemption or Stir It Up? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Stir yeah. It Up, for example, I have a podcast now that yeah. it's called Stir It Up. Yes. Um, anyways, so yeah, we settled on Redemption. Um, and it was to be, because we thought, you know what, let's find a way to get girls, and and there was nothing that people did for slow jams, for example. Yeah. So it was actually originally supposed to be reggae and slow jams. That's what Redemption started Redemption with. Redemption was supposed to be originally yeah. reggae and slow jams. Yeah. Didn't know Didn't that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so it was supposed to be originally um, thing on slow jams, and then um, we thought, okay, how do we? What was? What do we do to get people to come out? And we yeah. thought Bob's birthday was a good time, so the yeah. first one was really two thousand in February. Okay, so for Bob's why, birthday. For Bob's birthday, and that to this day seems to be like one of the bigger redemptions out of the whole series, the Bob Marley birthday one, aka twenty years is coming up next year. <laughs> I remember when Redemption, I mean, was at its super white hot peak mm-hmm. where you guys used to put up big fences outside of um, Cool House. Okay. You know what I mean? Tickets sold out weeks in advance. People are trying to climb the fence. It was crazy. So let me tell you, actually, <laughs> it's funny mm-hmm. you said that. Mm-hmm. We never did tickets then. You didn't do, that wasn't tickets back then? No, let me tell you what used to happen. Yeah. So back then, the whole idea behind it was... Let's get people to come out early. Okay. Right? So it was $5 with the flyer. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, again, part of the whole thing was, all right, get people to come out early, $5 with the flyer, right? Mm-hmm. And people were would come and line up from early just to yeah. get there and to get in for $5, mm-hmm. right? So um, the whole fence thing... As a matter of fact, the only reason why we went to Cool House mm-hmm. was a guy by the name of Neil Forrester. Of course, a substance you know group. Right. And he was mass appeal before that. Correct. Yeah. So I was good friends with Neil. Okay. And Neil would help me get uh, venues, mm-hmm. essentially, because he was a connect. Yeah. Right? Because he was actually the original owner of Granite Lounge. Okay. So when we did yeah. the first one, yeah. we did it w- at Neil's venue, which was Granite Lounge. Mm-hmm. So then he would be my connect to sort of get a couple of venues for me. Yeah. I didn't really have much connections in that downtown club scene. Yeah. So he would get things for me. So he was the one who made the connection for us to get Cool House, right? So when we went to Cool House, mm-hmm. um, it was both him. There was a time when uh, Charles, who was the owner of, of Inc., mm-hmm. and Neil pulled me into a meeting. Yeah. And they said, listen, mm-hmm. You're doing a $5 event that has a $20 value. Yeah. What are you doing? You're causing people to have chaos outside. (laughs) Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's all kinds of commotion just to do $5. Why don't you just do advanced tickets Mm -hmm. and do 20 bucks? And that's how that kind of started. Tickets came into, okay. Because you guys went to cool. Remember, this isn't a little club, you know. And this isn't, at that time, I don't think you guys had artists at um, Redemption yet. No, not yet. So you guys are doing a party in Cool House Bottles for $5. Yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah. So that's, that's, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, probably for maybe at least five years straight, 
we had the record for bar sales inside a cool house. In cool house. Yeah, because so many people would come, they pay five dollars and then they go You're to the bar and spend it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. So um, yeah, you know, the tickets thing was instrumental because of of Charles and Neil. Yeah. Um, the fencing thing was because people were coming so early, right, lining up. Mm-hmm. They needed the fencing on the outside to kind of keep people in order. To curve them, so to guide them into where you wanted them to go. Correct. Mm-hmm. Didn't really work out. Yeah, right? I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, because that's, if I'm not mistaken, that was one of the times that the doors at Redemption got rushed. Yeah. Right? So we had to figure things out along the way. Yeah. You know, all those little incidences were educating things for me. Like, you know, there was a time when, when that happened, mm-hmm. the next one we said, you know what? Even if there was no music on, let people in. Yeah. Because think about it. Yeah. When you have people lining up on the outside, mm-hmm. all you're doing is asking for trouble. That's true because you're just going to get antsy, more people, more people, more people. Correct. Yeah. Right. So those are some of the things that I've learned along the way and it stuck with me. And yeah, there's lots of, lots of... Um, of education along the way so yeah no that's big right there because again it's always good when i we go to redemption went to a couple and i still go Mm -hmm. but to know from you the behind the scenes that's always big to know that okay you know what they told me to do this this is what we did this is how this came about that's always big Mm -hmm. who was the first artist and why did you guys decide to bring a surprise artist to redemption why do we guys let me see boy Mm mm-hmm Trying to remember how that came about. Yeah. I think the first one, if I'm not mistaken, the first one was obviously one of the anniversary ones. Okay. Right? So it was like one of those ones in February. And I think it was something where along the lines where guys were in town. Yeah. Right? I think it was Tony Curtis. Yeah. And Jigsy King. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And they were in town Mm -hmm. and... They were like, yo, they'd come and do a thing for us. Yeah. Right? Just come and run on stage. Just don't advertise them, whatever. Right? You. Um, and um, yeah, they just come and ran on. Now, the whole surprise thing, mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. education. Yeah. The surprise thing actually came from KOS. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and the KOS thing was... Juve, for example, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we were, or no, not Juve. Return Fet, for example. Yes, yes, yes. Right? You'd yeah. Return Fet mm-hmm. would be Return Fet with surprise artists, right? Mm-hmm. So, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that whole idea, the whole concept of surprise guests yeah. came from that entity. Got you. Right? And one thing kind of lead to the next and we kind of bring it over into redemption, yeah. you know? So, it worked well where I saw the branding of redemption Mm -hmm. being the more important thing, right? And worked on that. Yeah. Um, And to have the surprise guest, you know, there was no dependency on the artist. And it keeps him him coming. Correct. We never know who it's going to be. It could be the biggest person to the smallest person. You just never know. Correct. That right there is so big banded. Let me ask you something personally now. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest misconception about the bandit The biggest misconception about the bandit Yeah. I think it's it's um it's the personality. Yeah. And and I, I feel because, you know, um people always figure I'm just that asshole yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay okay you said it yeah. good we could deal with that yeah. yeah i mean at the end of the day it doesn't phase me yeah um and it's not that i'm an asshole okay it's that i am there's no filter fair enough right mm-hmm. um yeah, i have principles mm-hmm. and I kind of stick by these principles i don't really bend very much mm-hmm. and because of my um, history, mm-hmm. um, I don't get phased, you know. Um, you know, I've been around superstars yeah. for years, 
You know, I mean, as I said, we were running a club in Grenada yeah. and bringing over people from all over. I mean, down from Super Cat to Sanchez, I've done in Grenada. In Grenada? Before here, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Long Long time. Time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing these things for years upon years. Mm-hmm. So, and and I've had friends who were like the manager of Tyson Beckford or hanging out with Jay-Z and them yeah. and you know what I mean? Like, so I've, I've been in the scene for a while. Yeah. So I have this simple principle where, you know, everybody just go to the toilet, mm-hmm. sit down. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And take a S. Yeah. You understand? So if everybody is going to do that, there's we're no, all the same. We're all the same people. Mm-hmm. So that's my principle. So now, I don't, I'm not um, impartial to anyone. Okay. Right? I have certain principles. For me, the most important thing to me mm-hmm. is family. As stated before. Yeah. And agree. <laughs> you know what I mean? I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, because I'm running a business, mm-hmm. um, I have to be strict on my lines because I'm running a business. Yeah. It's a service, right? And again, not trying to sound like an asshole, mm-hmm. but I feel people work hard for their money. 100%. Right? And because they work hard for their money, I want to make sure that whatever service or whatever it is that I'm providing to them is worth it for them. Mm-hmm. Right? And along the way, I've realized that it's not that people support you, but people pay for a good product. Yeah. Right? Because there's lots of times when I've done events and they end up with 30%. You know, it's not full. It's, it's, it's it busts. It's what it is. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's other times when it's sold out. Yeah. Right? And it, it distinguishes between whether or not the consumer decided that this was a good product. Yeah. And this wasn't. And that's basically how you see it. There's no feelings involved, no nothing. It's black and white. It's either they like it or they don't. Correct. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the biggest misconception about me is the type of person that I am. Mm -hmm. And and, um, I don't really sort of wear my emotions on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not very um, outgoing, per se, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I kind of will hang out with people and certain people who I call my friends, right? Mm -hmm. They know who they are. Yeah. Right? Everybody else is an acquaintance. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's my brethren, it's my partner, it's whoever, you know what I mean? It is what it is. People who are my friends, Mm -hmm. right, is family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and either family or acquaintance. Correct. I got you. When it comes to your playing style, Mm -hmm. how would you describe your style of music? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm a mixing guy I guess 100% agreed yeah Mm -hmm. Um, uh, a mixing guy um, again all these things is like things that I've learned along the way like there would be times when we would be sitting down in Golden Griddle yeah talking about bar counts and things yeah right I talking about skimpy and scratch and 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 jester and yeah. you know one of the things that we used to do regularly or frequent was um after a party we would go to golden griddle yeah. and have breakfast and be sitting there eating until all the wee hours of the morning yeah. talking about music talking about parties talking about this just we would all call each other and be like yo we're going to this one Mm-hmm. The one on College Street was a big one for us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we would go there and sit down and, you know, I would, you know, things like I would be in, I'd be at, where was it, boy? Um, there was a place called Taboo. I don't know if you remember that place. Taboo? Where, where was that again? Taboo was um, north of Eglinton on yeah. Young Street. There's a, there's a shopper's drug mart there now. Okay, yes. It was a couple of different things it was called, I think. Mm. That's Maybe. not where we're, um, it was on Eglinton or on Young? It was on Young. Okay, no, it's somewhere different than mm-hmm. I'm thinking about. Yeah. yeah. So close to where Yuck Yucks is. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So around there. Um, so anyways, um, back in those days, I remember I would be mixing and not really paying attention. Yeah. Right? 
And Scratch would say to me, yo, you need to finish your mix. Yeah. So I'd be like, finish yeah. your mix. <laughs> what do you mean? Finish your mix. I'd be yeah. like, tingly ba on ba, everything. What do you mean yeah. finish your mix? And finishing the mix meant mix it all the way down to the end. Like finish the mix either on bar or do something. Don't cut off a man saying something. God, you blend it 100. Make it yeah. as smooth as possible. Finish yeah. the mix, yo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or it would be one of those things where I got for myself, go back and listen to how you play. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time when I would do... Because I did internet radio and stuff at one point. I see. Treasure I mix. see Treasure Mix. Yep. Right. I used to watch uh, it. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, so I used to do Treasure Mix way back, um, and that was that came about because it was a practice session for me. Makes Use sense. it as a practice session. Yeah. Give it to people to listen to. Yeah. And I would listen to it myself. Mm -hmm. So then, based on that, I would listen back to things that I would do, and realize, okay, yeah. That doesn't sound very good. Mm -hmm. This is a better way of doing it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I would do mixtapes and listen back, and so my mixing style was basically mixing, hanging out and listening to guys like um, uh, SoundQuest. Yes, yes, yes. Boogeyman. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Big influence. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. again, those are like Boogeyman was the one of the few guys. That was mixing something after a two bar count. I was like, yo, what's this guy doing? How are you doing, doing it? <laughs> <laughs> right? And this is on records we're talking about, yes, not God. on a laptop. No, Bridget. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, and that was around the time when I had to go to his house one day. Yeah. I was dropping him off and I'd be like, yo, you need to show me how you did that <laughs> mix. Because I don't yeah. believe you do it. Yeah. Right? And the man take me down says in the basement, mm -hmm. he stacked about maybe three records. Mm -hmm on one side, and another two records on the other, mm -hmm. right? I see he drops something here, things playing, and then all of a sudden, I see him take off the record yeah. and drop the next one one time. I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Now I got you. I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So all, all those things from guys like that, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, picking up from all different people kind of molded me into who I am, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and that's why I say I'm a mixing guy. 100% agreed. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, not really a, a, an MC showtime guy. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about music for me, really and truly. This podcast is going to be one of the few times they've really actually heard you speak so much. <laughs> <laughs> I've known you for years, boss. Years. Yeah. We've had conversations, yeah. but we've never had anything yeah. this long. No, no, you know what I mean? No, yeah, no, because no. that's not, that's just not you. No. Nope. You know what I mean? Nope. That's not you at all. No. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't mind sharing. Yeah. You know, there's been guys who've come along the way who've asked, you know, for a little bit of advice and stuff, and I tried to give them advice. I don't see them actually taking it all yeah. the time. You know, um, but some of them do, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, I'm I'm an open book. Yeah, I don't really mind sharing information. I, I feel mm -hmm. like you never know what you could learn from someone. One hundred percent. Right, and and having a conversation with someone and networking with people, I feel that's so important, mm -hmm. especially in our culture, because you go in other cultures and you realize that's how they sort of make it and get forward. Mm -hmm. You know, is by networking. You never know who you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I feel that's very important. 100% agree because it's almost like your network equals your net worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's who you know and you have to. And in our culture, as you said, we're more stick to ourselves. We don't really share too much and stuff like that. But with the advent of the internet, everything is open up right mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm, so we could actually share and talk and correspond and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bandit, some of your stories have been mind blowing. I know a lot of stuff, you know, a yeah. lot. But what you shared had no clue. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's I have one more lot. question. But you know what it is? I really want to sit down with you and do a part two. That's what <laughs> this right, guy's a right. joker. <laughs> you sure you can get me to come back out there, right? Behind God's back? <laughs> You know how, listen, since we're going to be honest, you know how long I've been working on Bandit yeah, to come boy. to do this? You know how long? But listen, this is Mr. Do It All. So mm. he's always busy. You know what I mean? So just to get him out here today, but I know there's still another part two that I want to do because I'm going to ask you one question mm -hmm. then we're going to get to the rapid facts before I get you out of here. Okay, All cool. right? Yeah, What's your take on the Toronto Soka scene right now, 2019? 
the Toronto soccer scene. Mm-hmm. Because you're a man that's traveled. You go to most of the carnivals all over the place, and you see the differences and stuff, even the way they play, the style, everything. Mm-hmm. What do you really, what's your take on home-based Toronto? Um, I don't think we are the Mecca as we used to be. Yeah. I feel like um, uh, when I say the Mecca, meaning there was a time yeah. when I would say our general audience in Toronto mm-hmm. knew almost every B-side record. Yeah, and this is the B, not just the A, the one no. that everybody knows. No, no. Mm-hmm. we knew almost every B-side record. And mm-hmm. it was, I feel like most of that was because the album era was an important era. And the reason why you knew about the B-side record is because you'd be getting the album. Yeah. Right? So, you know, you'd be listening to um, the full Crossfire album, right? And individually loving every track on the album. Yeah. You know? Um, Or you'd be listening to the Colors album that, you know... um, uh, 96 would produce, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or the Kiss Kitty or whatever the case is. So a lot oh, of the you're time... back. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of the time, I feel like that made us the quote-unquote mecca because I would go to, you know, I travel to play in New York um, and there was a lot of records that they didn't necessarily know in those places. Makes you know? sense. Um, and and um, But we were, we were the... We were the guys who were really making a difference on the scene, mm-hmm. you know. You know, from way back then, I was still playing with with. I was playing with Tribe yeah. in in Trinidad Carnival. I was traveling to big, Barbados big, big. And, mm-hmm. um, and and you know playing for Beige International parties. Um, so I was I've been traveling for a while. Yeah, you know, playing okay. in Miami Carnival, playing yeah. in um, New York, um, playing in Antigua. Uh, obviously playing in Grenada, mm-hmm. uh, playing in St. Vincent, all them times. I'm talking about the early 2000s, right? Okay, from before it was big for everybody to start oh, yeah, traveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been playing from all then, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't feel we are the quote-unquote mecca like we used to be. Okay. Probably because of the internet. I could agree with that. Right? Yeah. Um, so I find that so many other places know about soca. It's mm-hmm. really hard to say that there is a, a Mecca right now. You know, there it's it's and it's I mean to me it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Right. But it shifted and opened up at the exact same time. Right. Mm-hmm. So with that said, I also feel like part of the reason is mm-hmm. the generation of Caribbean people that are in Toronto at the moment. Okay. Right? And I say that because if you're a first gen, you want a a taste of home. For sure. If you're a second gen, Mm -hmm. meaning second generation, your parents would make you want to have a taste of home. They're culturing you to their culture. Right. Mm -hmm. When it gets down to the third gen, it starts to get a little diluted. Yeah starts to get shaky. Right? So right now, I feel like a lot of the people who are in the parties now are third and fourth generation. So it's almost like hits. You have to hit them with hits, 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 opposed to hit, 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 B-side, 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 hit, 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 hit. Right. And there's no yeah. there's no urgency. Mm-hmm. Before there was an urgency for, for a first generation or a second generation, there's an urgency yeah. to... Yo, get some kind of bit of culture. There's yeah. no urgency for a third and fourth generation. No. It's just, let's go do this. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand? So it's mm-hmm. one of those things where, okay, it's not, they don't love it. They don't miss not getting it. Mm-hmm. So because there's no urgency, you kind of have to let them understand why it's cool. Make them understand, you know, you hope that they travel. You hope that they see it from the internet. You hope that they get the feel of the culture. Yeah. And understand why it's so important, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I'm saying that to circle back around and say the reason why the soca industry is a lot different now is because, again, the generation that is actually partying now. 
And I feel like the demographic, if you, I mean, you understand yeah. marketing and stuff, um, the demographic of people that actually party is between, you know, 18 to 35, for example, yep. right? And, you know, if you talk about a 35 year old, you're talking about someone who was born in 2000, um, 1984, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that person, when they were 15, was 99. Got you. Now, when yeah. you're a 15 year old, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, there really wasn't much on the radio. Maybe at that point in the early 2000s, that's when Jay came on the radio. So, but we're talking about a 35 year old who yeah. a 35 year old seasoned. Not only yeah. seasoned, but let me tell you what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Time to figure out where they buy and get in their mortgage. Uh huh. Right? They have different priorities. So now you have to back it down to a 25 year old. Mm -hmm. So, what was a 25 year old doing? 25 years ago yeah, yeah. what was it what was the time in what mm. was their what their was prime? going on back then what would they consider as you said old, old school. school yeah you understand yeah. so that no all those things play a, a a role or have a say in their mindset yeah how they party you know what is going on in the scene you know so you know internet thankfully is there you know people can see by the internet oh that's what job is about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is what dinner is about. Oh, I get it now. Mm -hmm. Right? That is what soca is about. Oh, that is why people jumping up. Right? They, they get it. But they, they try to mimic it. Yeah. Right? But it's not like they were really a part of it. They didn't live it. They saw it and wanted to become part of it. Right. They're yeah. trying to mimic that yeah. whole thing. So part of it is... You know, then they say to themselves, okay, at some point, I need to go and really experience that. Yeah. And then when they experience it, it's a different kind of experience down there. So, to answer your question of what is the Toronto soca scene like, mm -hmm. obviously it's different. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's still a good scene. Yeah. You know, it's still, I think it's important to note that we still have a unique identity because people still have to go to a special place to hear soca and reggae. Yeah. Right? It's it's not as mainstream as hip hop. Yeah. Back in the early 2000s, a partner of mine said this to me the other day, people were paying to go to an R&B hip hop club. Yeah. R&B hip hop is now mainstream. Mm -hmm. So R <laughs> yeah. so now R&B yeah. hip hop yeah. is in every club. Yeah. You know, yeah. back in the day, you know, the place, what they were playing was house music and thing. And that was considered club music. Top 40 mm -hmm. and thing was club music. Mm -hmm. You understand? But now, top 40 is R&B hip hop. So now a guy who was a promoter doing an R&B hip hop club at Fluid mm -hmm. or at Pearl Lounge yeah. on a Thursday and making his coin back then, he can't do that now because everybody on the ship is everybody doing Everybody is that. doing it. There's no, you don't have a unique position. You, you know don't I mean? have a unique position. Yeah. But... Fortunately, mm -hmm. for soca and reggae, reggae yeah, it still, still has that edge to it for now. For now. You know what I mean? Big, big, big bandit. Amazing. This round here is called the Rapid Facts. Okay. I ask you some quick questions. You yep. just give me back some quick answers, mm -hmm. and we're good to go. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the wallpaper on your phone? The wallpaper on my phone? Yeah. <laughs> my da daughter <laughs> and my son. All right. I figured. I knew that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what was the last thing you Googled? The last thing I Googled was um, a team, uh, a team out of the Netherlands. Okay. PSV. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Are you a cooker or a cleaner? Pfft, right now? Yeah. None of the above. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 15 years ago, I was probably yeah. a cooker and a cleaner. Got you. Mm. Okay. Dance hall or lover's rock? Both. Okay. Who was the last person you called or text? Last person I called was my wife. Yeah. Text my wife. All right. Good. Last place you've been on vacation. Not work. I know you love work. Vacation. Disney. Disney. Good one. What's your hobby? My hobby? Mm -hmm. hmm. Right now, I would say my hobby is my son's soccer. Yeah. It's your hobby. That's what you like. Yeah. All right. Curry goat or oxtail? 
Curry Goat. All right. <laughs> um, I was going to know. I can't ask you. I was going to ask you, what's your favorite song of all time? But you answered that yeah. earlier, yeah. said that there's a song for every occasion. Correct. One word or phrase you say too much? <laughs> One word or phrase that I say too much. Uh, maybe we uh, yeah. I have no idea you're not that, sure that, that, that one yeah that was a tough one alright I got two more here are you an early bird or a late night owl yeah mm-hmm. all of the above I knew you <laughs> <laughs> how you work and all that stuff you have to be able to play any position yeah but you know what I mean when it comes to social media where do you prefer Instagram or Facebook and why uh, Instagram yeah um, I feel like Facebook is dated. Okay. Um, when I say dated, I, I uh, you know, it, it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not appealing to the, the user, the consumer. I feel like. Like it did at one point. Like to me, it's like uh, the way the information is given to you. Mm-hmm. It's again, as I said, dated. Yeah. You know, it's not um, with with Instagram because everything is so now, mm-hmm. right? The information is given to you and you can absorb as much information, right? And that means you're absorbing the information faster, mm-hmm. you're getting educated faster. Yeah. And as, I, as you can tell, the theme of so far what I've been talking about is education. Education right? and like, family. Family. You know, yeah. it's not like getting that information. And, yeah. and one of the things that I do a lot is... You know, Google is my friend. Yeah. You know, you asked me about Google. Yeah. And I, the reason why I told you about PSV is because yeah. I was, I got some information about, I was trying to figure out what would be a nice place to <laughs> try to see if I can get my son into. Okay. Right? Yeah. As a, as a. Uh, soccer. Football. Yeah, mm-hmm. soccer, right? Um, so, yeah, information and is, is given to you much faster. You know, you can get uh, jokes faster. Yeah. It's because it's that quick it's insta it's insta and i mean it's crazy we got to the end of the rapid facts but there's one thing you brought up and i told you from last year when we're trying to put this interview together there was mm-hmm. something i was going to tell you mm-hmm. but i had to tell you it on air mm-hmm. bandit you are the greatest greatest hands down technical promoter toronto and canada has ever what seen this guy listen, listen listen this listen and no no know. let me tell you let me tell you when i say technical oh, you're the one you know how to play in facebook in Instagram, in Google, in YouTube, on a website, on an email, technical promoter, the greatest, the greatest about the saying, oh. greatest <laughs> technical <laughs> promoter we've ever oh, seen in Toronto, gosh. greatest. You tell me anybody um, else that knows how to use the internet to the way that you've used it to accomplish stuff. Sometimes you just go on YouTube and you'll see a redemption ad come up. What? You go on another site. Redemption ad come up again. How? What is this guy doing? <laughs> I, the I appreciate greatest. That. I appreciate technical. That. I appreciate when I say technical, you know how to make stuff happen. That means you're in your analytics. You you're you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. understand it. The information. Yeah. Bandit. The floor is yours. Any information, any contact, anything you want to say, the floor is yours before we get out of here. <laughs> um all social media, look the bandit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the website, thebandit.com. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have uh, <laughs> a bunch of other different businesses, but it doesn't make sense to go yeah. into all of them. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's too much. Yeah. You know, you know from the, uh, the music pool to, you know, obviously, you know, Toronto Lion, mm-hmm. and the stuff in Grenada, and just different things. And, you know, I mean, I did the <laughs> Rum Festival, yeah. and the Friday Night Mad. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's, it goes on. Bandit, crazy, crazy. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. Thank and, you and so congrats much. congrats to you. I can't thank lie. You. Because um, <laughs> I, I like, as I said, on your uh, on your Instagram, mm-hmm. persistence is virtuous. And I feel yeah. like, you know, there's very few people that would have that level of drive to keep going. Yeah. And it's when I see that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. when I see guys progressive like that yeah. in our culture and, and you know, you know, and I don't want to be that guy to say black men, but yeah. I when I see 
just people in general being progressive like mm. that in our culture, it, yeah. it makes me happy. For sure. You understand? Because they could be you could be doing so many other things. Yeah. You know, and and I feel like using that tool on top of your head you know, and actually putting it to use and doing things and using what you have. And to me, that's the kind of people I like to be around. Yeah. Because that person is progressive and it helps me progress. It helps me be motivated to do other things, mm -hmm. you know. And it means that there's more of me around. Yeah. <laughs> the box ideas off of and yeah. make things happen. Yeah. Something like that coming from you, that means more than you know, Ben. You know what I mean? Because it... Everybody sees, okay, yeah, you're putting out the episodes and all this, you got this guest and all this, but they don't know how hard it is Red. to actually get it together. Bandit, we've been talking about this for like a year now, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? I tell but that timing. I was like, I, I told Jay Martin today, I was like, yo, Jay, that man yeah. been on me from since yeah. last year. <laughs> and I've been ducking that man right through. I was like, yo, I cannot, because he wanted me to go to a meeting today. Yeah. I was like, yo, there is no way. Yeah. I'm ducking this yeah. guy again today. <laughs> it's not happening, Richard. Yeah. No. You're so the greatest. Like, yeah. You're the greatest. Bandit, thank you so yeah, very man, much. You. you know what? We're going to do a part two. Yeah, man. We're going to do a part two, you yeah. know. It might not be till You might have another a call with me, but... It doesn't, it doesn't matter. We will do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are... Out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.